Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at the best EDC ultralight pocket knives that you can get your hands on right now in 2020. Let's check them out. Now a beefy overbuilt folder is definitely going to have its place, but sometimes you just want something that you can slip into your pocket and you never notice it's there. This makes it very easy to carry every day since it's not going to weigh you down. And the easier something is to carry, the more likely you'll actually have it on you when you need it. Now everything we've got on the table today is very capable, but it weighs next to nothing. And to keep everything very easy to carry, we're going to make sure none of these go over the two and a half ounce mark. We're going to start with what I think is the forefather of a lot of the modern ultralight knives here today. It's not overly impressive by today's standards, but when this knife was released, there was nothing else like it on the market. This is the Gerber LST, definitely a game changer then, and even now, still being made in the USA, it can still pack a decent punch. There's two sizes, we've got a 2.6 inch bladed version, that weighs in at 1.2 ounces, or even smaller, and this would probably be relegated more to a keychain knife, we've got a 2 inch blade version, and that one barely moves the scales at all at 0.6 ounces. Now the steel is 420HC stainless, which is decent for the price, considering you're only paying 16 bucks for the small version or 20 for this larger one. Now the handles are linerless, they're made from glass-filled nylon so that it's strong and lightweight. You've got pinned construction with a back lock for safety. And really, simplicity is key to the success of this knife, and the template that Gerber laid down has been picked up by other companies, and it's still going strong today. Which brings us to Spyderco. They're certainly very well known for their lightweight lockback models, and we can't talk about Spyderco lightweights without starting with the Dragonfly 2. It's a bona fide classic in their lineup, and it perfectly embodies one of the best tricks in their playbook. And what I mean by that is they're able to take a small knife and make it perform like a bit bigger knife when needed. You're still able to get all four fingers onto the handle of the Dragonfly 2, but it comes in only at 1.2 ounces. Now they achieve that grip length with one of their key hallmark features. You've got this finger choil around the pivot, and that gets rid of some of the dead space that's usually there on a folder, and it makes room for your index finger to grab onto. Now the whole blade length, measured from the tip to the scale, is just over two and a quarter inches, but you really feel like you can do a lot more with it than the size would suggest, and that's down to the control you have thanks to that handle. And the grip certainly doesn't let you down. We've got FRN with multiple color options and what Spyderco likes to call bi-directional texturing. You've got these peaks surrounding the center that provide traction in both directions, forward and backward. You've also got easy one-hand opening thanks to that spider hole there, a mid-mounted lock back with the David Boyd dent, which helps prevent accidental closure, and a wire pocket clip that is reversible. Now at this point in 2020, these models start at $66.50 for the base version with a VG10 blade, but like Spyderco loves to do so often, there are a range of steels available. This one comes with K390 steel, which frankly offers an insane amount of edge retention, which is impressive when you consider that the price with this exotic material is still actually pretty decent, only about 98 bucks. But no matter which steel you choose, almost all of them feature this full flat grind on Spyderco's instantly identifiable leaf-shaped blade, which provides excellence in the slicing department. Now there's plenty of other lightweight lockbacks from Spyderco to check out. I'm especially a big fan of the Chaparral lightweight with its XHP blade, a little bit larger than the Dragonfly, but even thinner blade stock. And even the classic Delica clocks in right at our two and a half ounce limit. So just because I picked the Dragonfly for this list, I certainly didn't forget about the others. Now, of course, Spyderco aren't the only ones doing ultralight lockbacks these days, so I've got a couple more. The first here is the K-Bar Dozier Folder, which of course was designed by Bob Dozier. Now these definitely sit at the more affordable end of the spectrum. There's a couple of different blade shapes and finishes, but they all sit a few dollars on either side of 20 bucks. Now my personal favorite is the three inch spear point model, and that one clocks in at 2.2 ounces. So you got a lot of capability and it's still nice and lightweight. Now the handles are Zytel, and this one they call a Kelly green color, but again, there's a bunch of different colors available for the handles as well. And it's textured for a nice amount of grip, and what's really cool about this design is it has a neutral shape to the handle, so that's going to fit pretty much any hand size out there. Now the spear point blade is made from Aus 8 steel, which is a very solid choice, especially when you consider the price. It's stainless, easy to maintain, and gets you pretty decent edge holding as well. In a way, you can kind of think of this design, especially in the smaller configurations as opposed to this 3-inch version here, as sort of a more modern incarnation of the Gerber LST with the addition of a right-side thumb stud and a reversible pocket clip. 
Now it's nice and sturdy and it actually sits in a pocket in the handle, which allows them to get away with just a single screw that actually screws in from the opposite side. And that probably helps to keep weight down just a little bit so you don't have multiple pieces of hardware. All right, how about a classic design that's been reimagined as an ultralight lockback? And that's the Buck 112 Ranger Slim Select. Now this hits right at the top end of our weight ceiling at a full two and a half ounces. Actually, it's very similar to the Delica in that regard, both in its size and its weight. But despite the low weight, it still feels robust. It's made in the USA and it rings up at only about $24 right now. Now, of course, everyone knows what the classic 112 and the bigger brother 110 look like. You've got brass bolsters and wooden scales, but the Slim Select ditches those in favor of colored GFN, and they add dual thumb studs and a reversible deep carry pocket clip. Now, the blade gets a few updates as well, in terms of the shape especially. Now, the clip point shape has been made a little bit more EDC friendly, in my opinion, thanks to the straight clip profile rather than the more aggressive scoop of the original. It also gets a nice stonewash texture for a nice rugged longevity. It's still got their same great 420 HC steel, however, and with their heat treat, many regard Buck as having the best performance out of this steel of anyone out there. Now, upgraded versions of this knife are available with S30V for even more edge retention, and those come with Mikado or G10 handles with a more premium feel to them, but the weight does creep up a little bit on those models. Right now in 2020, however, there's a limited edition version for about 120 bucks that also features S30V and an upgraded clip, and that one has beautiful marbled carbon fiber handles that brings the weight right back down into our range. Now, of course, your knife doesn't have to be a lockback to be ultralight, and there's a lot of other locks that can join in on the fun too, and representing the liner lock on this list is the excellent CRKT CEO, weighs just 2.1 ounces, and it's going for 40 bucks. It's a beautiful and affordable slim executive knife. It features an almost quake and style blade. It's gotten this nice thin and elegant shape, which gives it a lot of precision. As far as blade length, we're a little bit over three inches. We've got 8CR13 MOV blade steel, which is roughly equivalent to OS 8. It gives you a really good bang for the buck and the action is really good on this knife too. IKBS ball bearings in the pivot combine with a perfectly placed thumb stud. And it grants a real mechanical satisfaction when you thumb flick that blade open. And one of the things I really like, you'll see as I fold this back up again, is that it's sized pretty much like a compact ink pen as the blade completely disappears within the handle. Now the handles are glass reinforced nylon, which helps keep the cost down, but they were able to make it look a little bit more premium, almost like carbon fiber in fact. And that's thanks to the subtle patterning on it that also adds a little bit of grip as well as that visual interest. And it's going to look just as classy in the pocket too, and that's thanks to the nice deep carry pocket clip. It is right side only, unfortunately, but that's the same as the thumb stud as well. Now, as I was pulling this list together, I was actually able to get a few frame locks onto this list that came in under those two and a half ounce, uh, that two and a half ounce limit I set, which is kind of surprising because a lot of the good frame locks bring a lot more weight to the table. But the first knife gets around that a little bit. This is the Kershaw Natrix XS with their patented subframe lock. It weighs just 1.9 ounces and runs for 40 bucks, just like that CRKT. Although at least for right now, when we post this video, this one is on sale for about 30 bucks. So make sure to check that out. We've got a really cool design with a very striking blade shape, 2.75 inches of 8CR steel. It's even got some really nice action too. And that's thanks to KVT bearings in the pivot and a manual flipper for blade deployment. Now it's not quite as unobtrusive as that CEO, but it's still a great size for a compact EDC with that sub three inch blade and a reversible deep carry pocket clip. Now the way that the sub frame lock gets around the weight penalty that most frame locks carry is by anchoring the full size lock bar to whatever material they wish. In this case, G10. This means they can get that same strong contact patch of a frame lock, but they don't have to use metal for the entire back. And at this price point, that would likely be stainless steel, which isn't exactly lightweight. And it also lets them bring that red sculpted G10 from the front onto the back. Now this next frame lock gets around that weight penalty in a completely different way. They've actually ditched the metal lock bar altogether. And I'm talking about the top end versions of the Italian made Fox Suru flipper, which is a Jesper Vaknea's design and it uses entirely carbon fiber for both sides of the handle. And that includes the lock bar itself, where it's only got that small steel insert at the end to provide the actual lock up with the blade. This lets them bring the weight down to just 2.1 ounces on this model. And most of that is down to this broad blade, which has a decent bit of thickness to it and just about 2.3 inches of length. 
And it's made from M390, by the way, which is pretty much the go-to for performance on premium knives these days. Now, it definitely carries a price premium, too. This is about a $270 knife right now, but it's a uniquely high-end experience with a locking interface like nothing else out there, but it still performs as any knife should. The flipping action is quite good, ball-bearing flipper, after all. And it even pulls a similar trick from Spyderco's bag with that full-sized finger choil there. For me, even with my slightly larger-than-average hands, I can still get all four fingers on this knife. Carbon fiber's got a really nice feel in the hand too. It's almost like a peel ply, and it's set off by this gorgeous pocket clip with this zirconium ball at the end. So now we come to the crossbar lock, and there's two designs I wanna share. The first is probably what a lot of people think of first these days when it comes to ultralight folders, the made in the USA Benchmade bug out family. This knife is famously known for offering a full medium sized blade with about three and a quarter inches of reach, bigger than pretty much everything we've looked at so far, yet it still weighs only 1.85 ounces. Now there's a few different color combos and blade finishes to be had. This Ranger green version with the smoked gray chromium nitride coating runs for about 144.50 right now, but the full size bug out starts at 127.50. Now, in addition to that, they've also released a mini version of the bug out, and that weighs even less, just one and a half ounces. And with that, you get a 2.8 inch blade. Now, if I had to pick one knife on the table that I thought was really the modern successor to the Gerber LST, it would be the mini bug out. It's scarcely any bigger, only weighs 0.3 of an ounce more, but I think it's pretty obvious when I hold the two up next to each other. Now moving back to the full size, the handles here are made from Grivery, and they're nice and slim, but still pretty comfortable because of the shape to it. But they've also got a new CF Elite version that's also available. And that material is impressively both lighter and stronger than the Grivery. It still manages to shave off just a fraction of an ounce more on the final weight, too. The blade steel is S30V, so you've got really solid edge retention, and the drop point shape is not only versatile, but it's also highly efficient at slicing thanks to a high flat grind and appropriately thin blade stock. As for pocket carry, the mini deep carry clip is reversible and it holds the knife very securely. And then at the heart of it all is Benchmade's access lock. You've got your ambidextrous crossbar that runs through both sides of the handle, it makes for easy wrist flicking of the blade open or closed. Crucially, it also allows you to keep your fingers completely away from the edge when you're closing the knife for extra inherent safety. Now, in addition to Benchmade, SOG is also doing an ultralight crossbar locking knife with their Ultra XR, which is a recent upgrade to their cash card money clip knives, and it comes in about 125 right now. Now, weight on these is a mere 1.2 ounces, and they mostly do this by specking all the materials as thin as possible. We've got linerless carbon fiber handles that are only millimeters thick, and the blade is also very thin in the cross section. Keeps the slicing performance up in addition to keeping the weight down. The blade steel is S35VN, and it comes in just under the three inch mark so that you're not gonna have to worry too much about carrying it most places. Now it's got a tie nye coating in two different finishes. The graphite's probably been the most popular, but I think I like the gold version even more. This knife has a reversible pocket clip that's nice and wide, and it's deep enough to fit a few cards or bills, or you can use it just as, you know, a pocket clip. Or you could even go a step further and remove this, and then you could slip this knife virtually anywhere, and it's really going to disappear until you need to cut something. All right, we're going to go back to Spyderco briefly, because I think you would all probably beat me up if I didn't talk about the Para 3 Lightweight. It's got a lot of the same great characteristics as the other lightweight models we've looked at earlier, except this one enters the last lock into our list today, and that's Spyderco's compression lock. Now this operates kind of similarly to a liner lock, except that it's disengaged from the spine side of the knife rather than the belly side. Now because of this, it actually retains both the flickability and the finger clearance as the crossbar lock models that we just looked at. Now the blade on this one is just a hair under three inches and it's made from BD1N stainless steel. It's a pretty solid material that's very easy to maintain. Generally not as long lasting an edge as something like S30V, but it's a definite step up from the Aus 8s and the 8CRs we looked at earlier. So there's a kind of cool comparison between the Para 3 uh, and that Ultra, but the blade edges are virtually the same on these two knives, but the difference in the handles is pretty astounding. Now, more than perhaps anything else in Spyderco's lineup, the Para 3 Lightweight is the small knife to get if you like the feel of a bigger knife, and that's thanks to the size of its handle, which truly offers a very hand-filling grip. And because of that characteristic, this knife actually makes a perfect transition to the next ones I want to show you, because sometimes you actually do need a bigger knife. 
Now the first bigger ultralight knife we're going to look at is the Zero Tolerance 707, American made and available for just under $250. We've got a three and a half inch blade with a titanium frame lock, but they keep the weight down by going with a nice slender profile and carbon fiber on the front side of their knife. And it tips the scales at just 2.3 ounces. This knife is also a fantastic gentleman's knife if you're okay carrying something this large in a quote unquote gentlemanly setting, but it's also made with ZT's typical rugged build quality, so it's tough enough to work very hard. We've got a three and a half inch blade of CPM 20 CV steel which is analogous to M390, it's just the American-made version. It features some curvature here at the heel of the blade and comes down to a very fine tip. Almost reminds me of the patata style or Sardinia knives from that region in Italy. Now this kind of shape has a good amount of power and a lot of precision too, which should make it pretty good for a large EDC knife. You've got enough girth here at the heel of the blade to push through some heavier cuts, but a lot, a lot, a lot of fine detail with that tip. Now the action is excellent as well, rockets out with a press on that flipper tab, and that's partly due to the KVT bearings in the pivot, but also to ZT's new tuned detent system. Now with a lot of frame locks, if you put too much pressure on the lock bar, it can actually make it harder to engage the flipper. Now the ZT gets around this because they place the detent on the carbon fiber side of the handle, rather than being part of the lock bar itself. What this means is you can put a pretty good amount of pressure on that lock bar without impeding the action. Rounding out this knife is a reversible deep carry pocket clip, and it's actually mounted from the inside of the knife. This helps to keep the knife on the outside looking clean, since they can maintain that reversibility without having any, any exposed screw holes on that side. They've also kept the clip nice and minimal and sleek, so it really blends in when it's clipped in your pocket. Now, offering even more reach than the ZT is another frame lock. It's the Boker Plus Urban Trapper Grand. Now this Brad Zinker design offers 3.8 inches, nearly four full inches of blade length and a titanium frame. And in order to bring the weight down, it's been heavily drilled along the front. Gets this knife down to just 2.43 ounces. Now that's especially impressive considering something like that buck from earlier weighs a little bit more at 2.5. Now the price on these knives are just under 140 bucks, although if you don't need quite so much length, there are cheaper and shorter variants in this series. There's a three and a half inch standard version. You can get those with some inlays too, not just in this drilled out motif. You can also get a petite version with two and three quarters of an inch of blade length, and that one weighs just 1.1 ounces. Now the blade itself flips open quite easily, and despite the size, it's got an almost delicate feel to the action. I mean that in a good way. Maybe refined is a better word for it. Now we've got VG10 stainless steel, another solid offering. I wouldn't say it's identical to performance as the BD1N on the Spyderco, but I would put these steels in roughly the same competitive set. Now there's some premium touches on this knife that help set it apart a little bit, and again would make this a great larger gentleman's knife. We've got a nice stylized pivot here. We've also got a nice horizontal satin finish on the blade, and that mimics a hand rubbed custom finish. We've also got a crown spine here at the back for both comfort and visual interest. Now despite all the size and capability you get with this knife, this is actually one of the easiest knives to carry on this list. You've got a deep carry clip which is on the right side only, and it keeps the knife nice and deep in the pocket. They've even inset it into the frame and used flush screws so it's completely smooth. There's nothing to snag when you're taking it in or out. This design is also narrow when it's closed up, just like that CEO from earlier, and it takes up virtually no space side to side. Plus, it's even flatter than that knife, so that when you slip it into the pocket, it's going to sit nice and snug, and barely even print on the outside of your clothing, even on thinner dress slacks. All right, so that's it for my list of the best ultralight EDC folding pocket knives that you can get right now in 2020. Love to hear what you thought. Make sure to let us know your favorites down in the comments, or if you've got another suggestion for this list, I'd love to hear it. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, as always, we're going to leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.